Okay, so so let's have some observation about this n r thing. So n one is equal to one, and then n n is also equal to one. So what does it mean? It means that how many ways are there to put n balls into one box? So there must be one way because you can have you can't have it empty. And then how many ways to put n balls into n boxes? Now remember the boxes are non-distinct, so there is actually one way. You have to put in each box one ball, so there is one way. Okay. Now what I'm going to tell you is, n r can be represented in general by something smaller. Okay. So think about this. So you have balls one, two. N, so you have n balls, and then you want to put it into r boxes. So let's call it the n minus one ball, and let's say this is the n ball. Okay. Now I'm claiming that there are two two ways. One is this n occupies a separate box, and nobody is sharing the same box with n. So this is case one. Case one is the last ball, this ball n, occupies a single box. It does not share with any other one. Okay, so this is one case. And what what is case two? Case two is case two is not sharing, right? And case two will be okay. It is in a box, but it has another at least one ball with it. It is going to be sharing. Case two is the sharing case. Sharing case. So the number of ways to put n balls into r boxes must be equal to the number of ways in case one, plus the number of ways in case two. Am I correct? Is that okay? So this is the rule of thumb. Either the last ball is sharing with somebody else, or the last ball is not sharing with somebody else. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So what? Let's do case one first. Case one is easy. How many different ways can can the last ball not share with others? How many ways are there? It does not share with others. So what will happen? If it does not share with others, what happens to the, the remaining balls? What happens to the remaining balls? They have to choose the rest of the boxes to put in. Is that okay? So the rest of the boxes, there are minus one of them. So the number of Ways for case one must be equal to. You have to sh choose r minus one balls. So this n minus one balls has to has to be distributed into the r minus one remaining boxes. Is that okay? Okay. Now case two. Case two is what? Case two is to share. Is that okay? Now to share it, it is very simple. It is very simple. So you let the other choose first. They, they are, they are already in their corresponding locations, and then I'm going to pick one of the box to join. Each different ways will give us a different cases. Is that okay? So I hope you understand that for case two, it it is equal to this number. It is equal to you let n minus one ball to choose our boxes first. You choose it, and then, and then what? And then you finally select where I should go, and there are going to be our choice for me. Is that okay? Does that make sense? So the the number of ways of doing the sharing is you can separate the the process into two parts. You let the others choose first. Okay, once they have cho they have chosen their they have chosen their their, their place, then I have our different ways to. To do the next step, is that okay? Okay. So, so let's yeah let's let's really check whether this is the correct view. Let's do the simple case first. Okay. So n r n minus one r minus. So let's do what? Let's do uh. Let's do this. N is equal to four. R is equal to three. Let's do this. Let's try n is equal to four, 
r is equal to 3. So there are four balls. 1, 2, 3, 4 balls. Is that okay? And there, so let's forget about the last ball first, okay? And there are all together three balls. And there are all together three balls. So the number of case for case one is four is going to be here. Is that okay? In a single box. And then one, two, three is going to occupy into these two remaining boxes. So there are how many ways are there? There are going to be three ways. Is that okay? Either one, two, and then three, or one, three, and then two, or two, three, and then one. Is that okay? So there are going to be three ways. So four and three. It is going to be there are three ways for case one. How about case two? Case two is what? Four is going to share with the others. So what should I do? So I put one here, I put two here. So because you, you must have these three things to be in the box here. Is that okay? Each one occupying one. So four is going to share. So it's going to share with this one or this one or this one. Is that okay? So again, there are going to be three cases. So three cases comes from one times three. Is that okay? And so it turns out that it is equal to six. Is that okay? Is that okay? Now, maybe this is not that complicated. Let's do a more complicated thing. Okay, let's do a, let's re reduce the number of boxes to two. This may be more complicated, okay? Four, two. Four, two, what does it mean? Okay, so, so we still have four balls. One, two, three, and then four. And then there are only two boxes. And then there are only two boxes. So case one is four is occupying this one. So you must have one, two, three, they are here. They cannot have any chance. So there is, so four and then two, it is equal to one. There is one case for case one. And how many case for case two? Let's take a look. So this, we have more. Case two is, we put four aside. We put four aside, we forget about this four and have two box for this one, two, three. How many ways are there? You may have one, two, and then three. You may have one, three, and then two. Is that okay? And then you will have two, three, and then one. Okay, so these are, these are the three cases that we do not count about this four. Am I correct? Okay, now we can put back four. Four may be put here. You get one, two, four, and then three. Four may, put, may be put here. You get one, two, and then three, four. Four may be here. You get two, three, four, and then one. Four may be here. You get two, three, one, four. Is that okay? And then four may be put here. One, three, four, two. And four may be put here. One, three, two, four. Is that okay? So here, for each of these cases, four will have different ways to, to be put. And how many ways are there for each case? There are going to be one and two cases here, one and two cases here, one and two cases here. It depends on the number of boxes that you have. So you have R boxes, so it is going to be multiplying with R. If you are okay with what is going on here so far, could you please raise your hand? Okay, excellent. Now, this is the so-called... Okay, so I'm going to wipe this. This is the so-called recurrence relation. Recurrence relation, it means that we are representing one thing based on other similar things. So it is like referring to yourself, recurrence. But this recurrence relation has a good thing. It is because if I want to compute nR this term, if this term is ready, this term is ready, then we can actually compute it all. So we can try to compute this using a, using a method of table filling. We are, tab we are filling the table. Let's have this side as n. Let's have this side as r. Okay. I don't know which one is better, but let's do this. Okay. So boxes may have, there's one box, two box, three box, four box. n may be equal to one, two, three, 
for something like this. Okay. So what do I know? What I know is that when r is equal to 1, it is always 1. So it is 1, 1, 1, 1. Is that okay? When r and n are the same, it is always 1. 1, 1, 1. Let's try a 5 here. Let's try a 5 here as well. So you have a 1 here, and then you have a 1 here. Okay. Now, if I want to compute this term, how do I compute it? This term, this is 3, 2, right? n is 3, r is 2. 3, 2 is equal to, you first find the term 2, 2. And then you also find the term 2, 1. This, this term is based on these two terms, 2, 2 and 2, 1. Is that okay? It is equal to this term plus this multiplied with this. Is that okay? This one plus this one multiplied with this. 1 plus 1 times 2, it is equal to 3. Is that okay? Is that okay? Now for this one, this is equal to this term plus this one multiplied with this one. So we got a 7 here. Is that okay? Is that okay? And this time, for this time, if I want to compute this time, this time is equal to this one plus this one multiplied with this one. So it is 3 plus 1 times 3, so it is equal to 6. Okay, we get the magic number 1761. And we have this one. This one is equal to what? This one plus this one times 2, so it is equal to 15. Is it okay? And this one is this one plus this one times 3, so it is going to be 25. Is that okay? Is that okay? And then this, this one, this one is equal to 6 plus 1 times 4, so it get 10 here. Okay, now this will be easy. Once we have this table, this table ca can be easily constructed. You don't need to have inclusion exclusion, right? You don't need to compute this CNR value. You just fill in the table. You can get the correct NR term. And then if you want to compute the number of subjections, we just multiply R factorial in the end, and that's it. Is that okay? So I think this is very cool. Okay, this is cool. And then this term has a, has a name. This, this term, this is, a f this, is a, this is something important in combinatorics, counting combinations and permutations, and it is called a, there's a name for it, so it is called a Sterling, so Sterling is a mathematician, Sterling number of the second kind. So if you're interested, you can search for the web for the Sterling number of the second kind. And a lot of amazing results you can get from it. So for instance, i just tell you one, okay. So, so how can we use these terms? How can we use these terms? So I hope you still remember what is, I hope you still remember what is n to the power r falling. What is it? This is, this is by my definition, you start with n, and then the next one is n minus one, right? And then you have n minus two, each one is one smaller than the previous term, multiply together, and then they are going to be r terms. Is that okay? Is that okay? Now, let's try. Okay, so this is something cool, okay. So for instance, x squared, x squared turns out to be equal to x times x minus 1 plus x, am I correct? Is it okay? So it is equal to x to the power 2 falling plus x to the power 1 falling. Okay? That makes sense, right? So this is x to the power 2 falling. It looks like x squared, but it is not exactly x squared because the next term, you minus 1 from it. This is like x to the power 1, yeah. So it is x to the power 1 falling. OK, you just have one term. How about x3? Believe me, <laughs> x3 turns out to be. So OK, you, you want to express it as something like this. <coughs> then. What? 
you are minusing too much. So here it is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x, am I correct? So we add back something to make it into x cubed. So how many should we add back? It turns out that let's try to add back 3 of this x and then x minus 1. Then maybe it is good, okay. So if you believe everything is okay, then the x cubed term is correct now because it is x cubed. There's just one way to get x cubed. And then the x squared term is now also correct because they are minus 3x squared. And then you have plus 3x squared left here. Is that okay? But now the number of x may not be correct. The number of x is not correct. The number of x here is you have, you have how many minus x here? You have plus 2x here. Am I correct? You have my yeah, so this is what? This is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x. Am I correct? This one is 3x squared minus 3x. Am I correct? Now the x term is, is not correct. It is plus 2x and then it is minus 3x. We need to get, get it back. So we add x back. Is that okay? Okay, so it is equal to what? It is equal to x to the power 3 falling. Is that okay? Plus 3 times x to the power 2 falling plus x to the power 1 falling. Is that okay? Okay, now, if you believe everything, I'm going to write this correct, then this is something amazing. x to the power 4 turns out to be equal to x to the power 4, 4 falling plus 6 times x to the power 3 falling plus 7 times x to the power 2 falling plus x to the power 1 falling. And then x to the power 5 turns out to be x to the power 5 falling. Yeah, I need to check. Okay. Plus 10 times x to the power 4 falling plus 25 times x to the power 3 falling plus 15 x to the power 2 falling plus x to the power 1 falling. Is that okay? So why, why I'm, I'm getting this? These are actually from these Sterling numbers. Okay. So this is an amazing coincidence about this Sterling number. So, so if you want to write it down, it is like x to the power k, k is an integer, it is going to be equal to, you add back add a lot of terms. You add a lot of terms. So from r is equal to 1 up to k, up to k, so you get, you get what? You get k r times x to the power r falling. So it turns out that it has this very beautiful relationship. Okay, so let's take a break first. Okay.